So this idea of self-confidence, most entrepreneurs, most people in, in business, leaders, they're going, Vanessa, I think I'm pretty confident. I run a business. <laughs> How do you define self-confidence in the right way? Okay. So first of all, I love it. If you heard that and you're like, I've got all the confidence in the world, I'm so happy. If you heard that and you thought, I need a dose, I need a dose of confidence, then I also got you. My definition of confidence is very different. What people don't realize is that our confidence is not just for us. It's also for others. Research is very clear on this, that our confidence is contagious. In other words, we are drawn to people who have high confidence and high charisma. And those are actually two slightly different words, but we can define them in a second. That we like people who exude presence, power, warmth, and competence. And so confidence, the way that I define it, the way that I like to teach it and bottle it and harness it, is if you are confident, you are more positively contagious. When you walk into a room, hop on a video call, chat on the phone, text someone, highly confident people are actually gifting confidence to the people they're talking to. And there is no better way to be in the world. Wow. So this idea of confidence, I think a lot of leaders out there have what we might label imposter syndrome, where they're kind of like, yes. I'm confident because my team needs me to be confident. I don't really <laughs> feel it in the moment. I don't really know what I'm doing. But if they knew that I didn't know what I was doing, they wouldn't trust me. And like you said, it's contagious. And so their their nervousness and their lack of confidence is also contagious. Do you believe in this like fake it till you make it mentality of just kind of faking confidence? Okay, so I am a recovering awkward person which means that I will, I will I, admit I am too. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so if this is you, you have you know that you have abilities, right? You have some technical smarts, you have intelligence. The problem is if you have this internal awkwardness or imposter syndrome depending on it how extreme it is, our awkwardness can dress up as things that get us in trouble. So if we feel awkward in a meeting or with our team or selling or speaking on stage or pitching ourselves or our ideas, what happens is one, we can overthink. So I'm a social overthinker, right? Like I, I lay in bed at night replaying every conversation I had that day, right? So that's exhausting. Who, what, what leader has time for that? That's number one. Second is we can doubt our actual skills. So I know that folks who are listening, they have real skills. In fact, this is the problem of very smart people. Our awkwardness can make us doubt the actual skills that we have. And so what I want to talk about is I don't love fake it till you make it. But I do like the idea of understanding how we can authentically harness our actual competence and showcase that very clearly to other people so that we're showing them, I know my stuff, but also still being vulnerable, right? Like, I think it's still, as a leader, okay to say, I know this, and also I don't know this. It's a balance between both. Mm. So this idea on becoming a more self-confident leader. You mentioned it's not just for the leader, but it's also for the team. What is the ripple effect of really leaning into this? Yes. Okay. So there's a metaphor I love. Forgive me. I love a good metaphor, but I think it kind of grounds us here, which is, you know, that there's a metaphor of the aspen trees. So if you see a grove of beautiful aspen trees, there's those, there's those tall white trees. Um, they look like they stand alone, but actually aspen trees have a shared root system. So what happens is in an aspen grove is if one tree is lacking water, a tree from the other side of the grove will get the water and pass it through the root system to the tree that needs it. Confidence works the exact same way. So if you're a team and you're in your, in your virtual room or you're in your actual room, it looks like you all stand alone. But actually, in a good team, there's a shared root system. And a true leader is constantly looking to see who needs what resource, who needs more water, who needs more nutrients. Who has an abundant amount of water and nutrients? And so if you're confident, you are not only know your own resources, your own abilities, when your cup is overflowing, who you can give it to, but you're also identifying the confidence of the people on your team. And that's an incredibly important aspect of confidence because if you know where you stand and where each of your team members stand, it helps you actually be more supportive as a leader. Mm. And you mentioned the word charisma kind of tied to this idea of self-confidence. A lot of leaders out there are going, well, charisma, that's like a larger-than-life personality. Vanessa, that's just not me. I don't have that. Can I get it? Do I need to have it? What is your thoughts on that? Okay, so I had this mistaken belief. I was trapped by it for many years. But to be charismatic, you had to be extroverted. 
Or to be charismatic, you had to have the booming, life-of-the-party personality. And thank goodness, what research has looked at is that highly charismatic people are not more extroverted, they're not more attractive, they're not more athletic, they're not even smarter. That gives highly me hope. Charis- <laughs> uh, me too, <laughs> me too, my friend, me too. Here's the good news. They found that highly charismatic people, what makes them highly charismatic, what differentiates them from the control groups, is they rank high in two specific traits, warmth and competence. That highly charismatic people, the reason we're drawn to them, the reason why they are confident is because they have off the charts warmth. So that's likability, trustworthiness, friendliness, and they are signaling to the world, open up to me, you can trust me. But at the same time as as that high warmth, they're also signaling high competence, high competence, capability, power, efficiency. In other words, for leaders who want to be more effective, the single most important thing you can do is very quickly answer in all your interactions two questions. You can trust me and you can rely on me. So that way people know, ah, I can trust and like you, but also I can depend on what you're saying. I know that what you're saying is reliable, so it will actually help me. So when leaders are thinking about walking into a room, I don't need you to be the booming personality. I don't need you to be more extroverted. All I want you to focus on is sending cues of trust and reliability.